I've been with the office now for 25 years and I've sold a lot of property over the years. I've been one of the top agents in Mountain Home for the last seven years. The biggest number one thing that people do as a mistake is they overprice their homes. Let's face it, we live in a computerized world and nowadays a computer sets the price by what people toggle in. So if they're looking for a home between 150 and 200,000, that's all the computer sees. If you price your house at 215,000 thinking I would take 190, your house is not even going to be shown because the computers don't even know it's for sale. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is overprice their house right off the bat. Then later on think well we can always lower it. But the longer it's on the property uh, longer that it's on the market, the harder it is to sell because it develops in a stigma of being on the market for a long time. I have seen sellers list the house and they list it at a good price and immediately get a good offer. And they turn that offer down thinking we've listed our house too cheap and we have to hold out now for full price. And then six months later, they'll knock the price down because it hadn't sold and then accept another offer for less than what they've already been offered right off the bat. So sometimes your first offer is your best offer. A lot of sellers make the mistake of pricing a home based on their need. They need to pay off a car, they need to pay off a credit card. Sometimes they even need to move out of state and they think that they need to sell their house for enough money to buy another home somewhere else. Well truly the market doesn't care how much you owe on the house, it doesn't care where you're going. The market is set by what other homes around you are selling for. The market is not set by your real estate agent, it's not set by the seller, it's set by truly what it's called, it's the market. So you have to price your house according to what else has been out there for sale in the past and what's for sale right now. Truly, a buyer is going to look at other homes as soon as they leave out of your house. And when they go to this other home that's after yours, and if it's a better home, price for less money, they're going to look at that home and compare it to your home, and they're actually going to use your home to justify that the other home is priced well. And they're going to buy the other home. And you're going to see other homes selling around your house and think, well, why isn't our house selling? Well, it's because you priced your house too high, and they're actually using your house to justify the price of the other homes around you. So it's important to price it right to begin with. I have developed over the years what I call a three strike rule. Basically when a buyer walks into a house, sooner or later they're going to find something they don't like. Every house has got a strike. So don't feel bad if your house has something that you think somebody's going to have an objection to. It's when they see two strikes, something else they don't, they don't like. That's when they start looking the house over really hard. As soon as they find that third strike, most of the time, they're gone. So I have a three strike rule saying that if there's three things somebody doesn't like, we need to try to eliminate some of those problems. It could be a two bedroom house instead of a three, that could be a strike. Some strikes you can't change. So all you can change is the price to make it more appealing. Some homes will have a steep driveway, but some homes will have a bad odor, they'll have a little dog yapping inside, um, sometimes they'll have a mark on the wall that can be fixed with paint. So many of the strikes can be fixed. And so at Gilbert Realty, we are a team of professionals that we help guide you through what you need to do to get your house sold and eliminate as many strikes as possible. The advantage of selling a house in this market right now is that you have all the power when you get your house sold. You may sell your house right now for a little less than what it was worth a year or two ago, but consider this, once you have the money in your hand, then you have the buying power of the whole market. Go out there and find a good buy on another house, and even if you're moving to another market that's higher priced than here, those homes, chances are, have gone down as much if not more than Mountain Home. Mountain Home really hasn't been hit as hard with prices falling as a lot of the other areas that you may be moving to. Another problem that we have is is people overpricing homes and, and finding a buyer just by chance that that happened to be the perfect home for them and they paid close to what the seller was asking but in this market they got to appraise so if the other homes around you haven't sold for as high as yours you're going to be stopped before you get very far down the loan process because the house won't appraise out so it's hard to overprice the house in this market and get away with it any buyer, when they buy a home, they're going to do it by comparison. They're not going to look at one home and then say, where do I sign? They're going to look at every home they can find and 
there's going to be three or four of the top buys out there, and that's the ones they're going to choose from every time. Now, once you have your home priced right, one of the biggest suggestions that I make is for the seller to get out of the house. I know you want people to see your house, and I want, you want them to see all the nice features you have, and that's why you think that you need to be there. But what's going to happen is the buyer is going to be looking at you. They're going to be afraid to look in your closets because you're hanging right over their shoulder. They're going to be talking about grandkids or maybe where you're going to move to. And when we get back to the car, the buyer's going to look at me and laugh and say, I don't remember anything about that house. So all we did is talk to the seller. And they rule it out because they don't remember anything about it. So I want that seller or that buyer to feel at ease that they can look in the closets. In fact, I want the buyer to say, I don't like the color of that paint because then I can mentally say, we can change that paint. What color would you rather have there? And once you get back in the car, there's no way you can justify fixing their problems because you're not staring at them right then. So I like to overcome the objections when I'm right there staring at them. Another good thing to do is to get the clutter out of your house. A lot of pictures on the walls of grandkids, I know it's important for you, but it distracts the buyer. It, they make it, it feels to them like it's not their home. They, they can't visualize themselves living there. So if you need to rent a storage unit, put some of the things in the storage, declutter the house, declutter the closets, the garage, the crawl space, anything that, 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 that tends to make the house look smaller, it would really help to, to get those things cleaned up. Appeal to a buyer's senses, not just the sense of sight, but the sense of smell. A, a mark on the wall may mean that that wall needs to be painted. You're gonna gain two things by that. You're gonna gain the wall looking nice, but more importantly, you're gonna gain that wall is gonna smell like fresh paint. So freshen up the house, freshen up the carpets, clean the carpets, anything like that. In a tight market like this, when there's a lot of homes for sale and only a few of them sell them, make sure that yours is the one that sells. A dog or a cat is another problem that people have, and I know you love your animals, and I'm an animal lover myself, but you've got to make sure that those animals are no distraction to the buyer. They've got to be out of the house because a yapping dog really affects people. A smell of a cat litter box really affects people, so really try to keep the odors down, um, keep the animals at bay to where when a buyer looks at the house, the animals don't even come into the question. A lot of sellers, they, they want to get all the notes they can. And I know why you want the notice is you want to be able to get it as clean as you possibly can. And we want it that way too. But you got to think in a tough market like this, you've got to make your house easy for people to see. A lot of our best buyers show up in the parking lot with a moving van of everything they own saying they're here to buy a house and they're excited and they want to see what there is. And the houses that we can't show them for a day or two, they've already bought a house by the time that they get there. So make your house easy to show and we'll work with you and try to give you all the notice we can too. But the last thing I can do to give you some words of advice and wisdom in selling your house, choose your real estate company very, very carefully. Gilbert Realty has a team of well-trained agents. We have training seminars, we have videos, we know how to price houses right, we know how to market them correctly, we're the most aggressive on the internet. And that's, it's, when you tie your house up with a real estate company, it may not sell. And you may go through the best time of the year with somebody that is not working it correctly. So choose correctly. Have one of our agents out, interview us, and we'll show you what we do to get the job done.